in today's lecture, we are going to start with within this problem and reconciliation. And without wasting a time, let us start. Okay. So, uh, uh, legend is polynomial. Before I begin, we uh, we want to study what you what you want to say, what one says reconciliation, and what is a reconciliation? Reconciliation is a legend is it is a relation between relation between legend is polynomial of different order, or it is a relationship between legend is polynomial of different order and the derivatives. So this is how you are going to describe your legend, uh, reconciliation. Okay, and one of the formula that can be very handy is Leibniz formula. And also the Rodriguez formula. So, what is Leibniz formula? I'll come to it later. But you know that uh, legendus polynomial of different order can be can be ex, uh, can be uh, derived from a Rodriguez formula, which is one upon two the power n if it will dn upon dx and x square minus one the power. N. Okay. And here x square minus one the power n can be written as x plus one the power n x minus one the power. N. This nth derivative can be expressed in this formula. This is known as your Rodriguez formula. This is known or known. Uh, sorry, this is known as your uh, recurrence. Uh, uh, this is known as your Leibniz formula. Okay. Now uh, let us come uh, to a point uh, where we are starting with recurrence relation. However, for examination, I will suggest that whatever recurrence relation is given to you, you just put some values. Let's say n equal to two, n equal to three, n equal to all these values. And since I've already told you to remember these things, that is p naught x is one, p one x is two x and p2 x is 3 x squared minus 1 upon 2 and you know that your p3 x is 5 x cube minus 3 x divided by 2. Okay, so this is how your uh, like the different orders of the legend of polynomials are. So if you are supplied with the legend of polynomial, what you can do is you can uh, if you are supplied with a recurrence relation in exam, then what you can do is for example, if you are supplied with this. So I'm giving you what one needs to do in exam. So one of the MCQ has this option, has this option. Let's say Pn plus one dash X is equals to two N plus one Pnx. And then you have plus Pn minus one dash. So for example, if you have certain, this kind of uh, recurrence relation given to you in exam, what one needs to do in exam is, you just try to place the values. So let's say if I place n equal to 2. So what I'll get, I'll get p3 dash x, which will be equals to d by dx of 5x cubed minus 3x divided by 2. So this is equivalent to writing 15x square by 2 minus 3 by 2. And now let us write RHS. So what would be RHS? RHS would be 5 times pnx. So your pnx is 5 x cube, sorry, n equal to 2, no? so it is 5, 3x square minus 1 by 2 because p2x is there. And then p1, so this is p1 dash, so p1 dash would be equal to writing simply x here. Not even x, it will be simply writing 1 here. So if you take this, this will be 15x square by 2 and minus 5 by 2 plus 3 by 2 is minus 3 by 2. So you can clearly see that your LHS is equal to RHS. Since in examination, you know that in examination, you know that if this is a recurrence relation which is true for all n, then why not one specific n? So if you can reject and select using these uh, uh, by a method of putting the values, then it can be very handy in the multiple choice exam, like net examination. Okay, uh, but overall, uh, if that is not the case and one needs to actually derive it, uh, what I can do is I can use two approaches. One of the approaches like uh, via generating function. Okay, one of the approach can be by a generating function, and another approach can be using um, uh, can be using uh, like a Rodriguez formula. Okay, one can also use Rodriguez formula to derive all these quantities. So right now I'm going to take an approach where I'm going to do all these things using like a few of them. I'm not going to derive much of them because not much much of them is going to be asked in your examination. But still, some ask when someone asks you about the proof of this. So what you are going to do? Okay, so. Uh, let me try to write what is p n plus one dash x. So your p n plus one dash x would be one upon two key power n plus one, and then you can write n plus one factorial, and then you can write d n plus two because uh, d n plus one, and then again a derivative because p n plus one would be this is not p n plus one, this is p n plus one derivative. So this this is p n plus two, and then you have x square minus one key power n plus, one. and then you are going to write it in this way. And 
and you can differentiate it. Right? So if you differentiate, you'd get n plus one, x square minus one to the power n, and then you can write this. And then what one can do is, you take this two common root, you take n plus one common root, you'll get p n plus one dash x is equal to one upon two to the power n, n factorial. And then you can write dn. And again, you can take a derivative inside. So derivative inside would give you it would give you x squared minus one raised to power n because this two is outside, n plus one is outside, plus n into x squared minus one to power n and then two. Oh, sorry, this is x squared. Okay, so this is what is making. Now, what you can do is um, by certain uh, by certain small manipulation, what I can do, I can write it in, in, it in this fashion x square minus one key power. And then I can write this x square is again x square minus one key power n minus one. You have a 2n here, and then I can write x square minus one plus. And if I do so, what I'll get, I will simply get pn plus 1 dash x is equal to 1 upon 2 to the power n, n factorial. I'll write dn and inside you have x square minus 1 to the power n. And then this is 2n uh, into x square minus 1 to the power n plus 2n x square minus 1 to the power n. Minus. Okay, so this is what is going to be. And if this 2n is again, like divided here, so this will be pn plus one dash, and it will be equal to writing one upon two key power n n factorial dn, and then two n plus one, and then x square minus one key power n, and one upon two key power n minus one n minus one factorial because this will get divided, and uh, you can write dn minus one, and you can take a d common out from here, and here you have x square minus one key power. Okay, so this is how it is. And then what you can do is you can write Pn plus one dash x is equal to one upon two key power n. And this entire thing is simply written, you can write it as two n plus one, and then you can write Pn, Pn. I think I can write uh, simply Pnx, right? And the second part is derivative of this particular part, which is the derivative of Pn minus. So eventually, eventually, this would be your answer. So pn plus one dash x would be equivalent to writing two n plus one pn x plus pn minus one dash. X. Okay, so this is one. Another way, another recurrence relation can be like, for example, one can ask you, um, one can ask you, so second recurrence relation, one can ask you, let's say, what is pn plus one dash x? Prove that it is equivalent to writing pn dash x plus n plus one pnx. So for this, I'm going to use Roderick's formula and also uh, not only Roderick's formula, but also Leibniz's formula. So what I'll do, I will simply write what is my pn dash x. So one, uh, once again, I'm going to write pn dash x. So your pn dash x, so let me see if I have evaluated it somewhere. So I'll use that instantly. Um, so let us do it once more again. Let us do it. So what will be pn plus one dash? It will be equivalent to writing n plus one. N plus one factorial. So this is your I'm writing LHS. So you have pn plus one dash would be equivalent to writing uh to n plus one n factorial, and then I will write dn plus one and the derivative inside. So derivative inside would give you n plus one, <clears throat> n plus one, and then I will write x square minus one key power n into 2x. Are you getting my point? So this is pn plus 1. So pn plus 1 is simply writing 2 key power n plus 1 on, in the, on n plus 1 factorial and simply dn plus 1 and x square minus 1 key power n plus 1. Now, if I have to take the derivative, this will be 2. And if this is 2, I'll do what one thing? I'll use dn plus 1 here and I'll take d inside. So I'll differentiate this term and this is what I've done here. So eventually, what I will write is, I will simply write it as 1 upon to keep power n, n factorial. And then I have this dn plus one 
एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वन की पावर एन इन टू एक्स नन शुड एडमिट दैट दैट इफ आई डिफ्रेंशिएट माय एक्स बियॉन्ड दिस लेट्स से इफ आई डोंट डिफ्रेंशिएट इट देन दिस वुड बी एक्स इफ आई डिफ्रेंशिएट इट वंस इट वुड बी वन बट इफ आई डिफ्रेंशिएट इट ट्वाइस दिस वुड बी जीरो सो इफ आई यूज अ लिमिट फॉर्मुला हियर so what it is going to be it is going to look like r equal to 0 to n plus 1 and here i will write n plus 1 cr and here i will write d n minus r x square minus 1 to part n into d r x and one can clearly see that if i am going to differentiate it n times like if i am going to differentiate it beyond one time that is if r is 2 then this would be zero and over all things would be zero so what what is uh, required of me It is required of me that I should take only r equal to zero and one. Otherwise, it's not going to contribute anything. So, if I take r equal to zero, I will get n plus one c naught. N plus one c naught is one, and this will be d n. I'll write d n here. D n, and I will write x square minus one to the power n. And this is r equal to zero. This is simply x over plus one upon two to the power n n factorial. R equal to one. Just write d n minus one. X square minus one to the power n, and then the derivative of this. And oh, okay, sorry, I forgot this particular part also. N plus one c one. So n plus one c one is simply n plus one. So I'll write n plus one. So effectively, at the end of the day, it is like p n plus one dash x is equal to one upon two to the power n n factorial. And uh, uh, this is like if I multiply, this is undifferentiated x, and this is x square. So overall, this particular term. You just look at this particular term. This is equivalent to writing p and x, isn't it? This is equivalent to writing p and x. So what I can do, I can write it as x into p and x plus. And here you, if you see, here if you see, this is. Uh, I think there is a mistake somewhere. Okay. So that was d n plus one. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. So it is uh, my mistake. My mistake, sir. This is the n plus one. So if I write, uh, if I write, uh, what should I write? If I write r equal to zero, so this would be sorry, my mistake. So this is d n plus one. So it, in instead of writing d n plus one, I will simply write it as this x is undifferentiated. This will go here, and this will be dash. Because see, what is d n plus one? I am writing it here. Sorry, d n plus one, and it is x square minus one to whole power n. And divide it by two to the power n n factorial. So what I'll do, I'll take a d out, and then I'll take the in, and this is like this. And you already know that whatever written here is p n. So p n d is derivative of p n, that is p n dash, and then this is n plus one. And uh, sorry, my mistake. This would be again uh, n only because see uh, here we are uh, referring from uh, this is n plus one c r right. So uh, that is fine. Okay. Uh, my mistake. Um, okay, so and this would be I think P N X. So this is what we needed. This is what we wanted to find that P N dash X can be written as X P N dash plus N plus one P N X. Is that clear? So this is one of the uh, one another uh, recurrence relation that you can remember. So one of these two recurrence relation we have already derived. This is recurrence relation number one, and this is recurrence relation number two. What now can be done is different sort of thing. You can subtract two from one. It will give you another recurrence relation, and so on and so forth. So a general strategy would be either to use Rodriguez formula or to use generating functions. So at times you can also use generating function in order to uh, derive some of the recurrence relations. So uh, let us take an example and uh, understand. Can we really do so? And uh, okay, so. Uh, Can also derive. Uh, we can also derive. Recurrence relation using a uh, generating function. So you know that if I use a generating function, then also I can um, uh, I can derive a different. Uh, Legendar, uh, sorry, uh, legendar polynomials of different order. So let us uh, write the generating function. So generating function or legendar polynomial is given by one upon root over one minus of 
two t x plus t square. It is equivalent to writing n equal n equal summation n equal to zero to infinity v n x t k power. N. So whatever is the uh, coefficient of t k power n will give you different orders of Legendre's power. So what one can do? One can differentiate this uh, uh, generating function. Uh, I'll write differentiate this generating function g uh, partially with respect to t. Partially w r t t. So if I differentiate it partially with respect to t, that is del g upon del t, then it will be equivalent to writing. Uh, I think this will be equivalent to writing minus two x plus two t because this derivative and this entire thing would come here. So I'll write in fact minus half also here. So this is the one minus two x minus two t x plus t square e power minus half. Uh, this is the by by chain rule and it, this the in the denominator you will get one minus. 2xt, uh, sorry, plus t square. I have written 2xt and then 2tx. I think they're one of the same thing here. Not going to much matter. So, okay, so this is it. But also understand on the right hand side, partial differentiating with respect to t would imply n equal to 0 to infinity, n equal to 0 to infinity. And this is equivalent to writing n into pn x into this will be t key bar n x. Okay, and uh, effectively at the end of at the end, I, I can just take this in and this I'll get x minus t divided by 1 minus 2xt plus t square raised to power 3 by 2 and it is equal to writing summation n equal to 0 to infinity and this is n this is pn x t key power of n I hope it is clear and what I can do is I can try to write I mean uh, this particular thing I can write x minus t here and I can simply write 1 minus 2xt plus t square and I can write root over here and one of them I can take there 1 minus 2xt plus t square and this will be sums n equal to 0 to infinity and this is n p n x t key power n x and uh, if I want to use the generating uh, again if I want to use generating function so this this will again generate my legendary polymer this denominator so I'll write x minus t and this would be equivalent to writing sums n equal to 0 to infinity. And this will be pnx t key power n is equals to uh, 1 minus of 2xt plus t square. And then you have this summation n equals to 0 to infinity. Uh, let us write this as plus only. And let us take it there. So I think this will be t minus x. So I think one step only I'm going to use t minus x. And this is summation n pn x and this will be t key power n minus and this is equal to zero. So what I've done, I've taken this all over there. Okay. I've taken this here. Okay, is that clear? So uh, eventually, uh, after all, what I'll get if I rearrange all the terms. Okay, uh, so if I rearrange all the terms, what I'll get. So see, these sums are going over t. These sums are uh, sorry. These sums are going towards n. So I can take t inside. I mean, I can take the inside because after all, uh, after all, anyway, like if you expand this thing and then multiply with t square, then okay. So what I'll do, um, I'll I'll rearrange all these things. If I rearrange all these things, what I'll get? So what are are the coefficient of t key power n plus one? I'll write them. So t key power n plus one. One of them is this. So one of them is itself like. Chalo, I'm going to explain to you what I'm trying to do. Just see if this t square multiplies with t key power n minus one, this will yield you t key power n plus one. So here you will get one t key power n plus one, and there is n also here. Okay, and here also you will get t key power n plus one. So effectively, I can write summation n equal to zero to infinity. This would be n plus one, and then I can write p n x, and then I can write t n plus one. Then what is another term? Let's say this is t multiplied with t key power n minus one would give you t key power n. And again, from here, this is summation p and x, and there is x also here. There is x also here, and this is negative also, and this is negative also. Here also, there is an x. So I'll write minus of 2n plus 1 x, and then p n x, and this is t key power. Okay, this is something that you can verify on your own. And last would be uh, 1 into uh, whatsoever, whatsoever is this. This would be sums p and x. T key power n, T key power n minus. This entire thing will be equivalent to writing C. Okay. Now, okay. So what you can do, 
like if if you want to uh, okay okay now what is the problem problem is that all of these terms have different powers of n so what i can do i can bring them bring each of the term in the power t raised to power so it, as 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 t raised to power so for that the first term the first term your n should be replaced by n minus 1 and then the last term this is in the first term that you should do and in the last term last term your n must be replaced by n plus 1 so if n is replaced by n minus 1 at the first term this would be n this is pn minus 1 x then minus 2n plus 1 x this is fine and this is pn that is absolutely fine and then the last term n has to be replaced by n plus 1 this will be n plus 1 and this will be pn plus 1 so at the end one can see 2n plus 1 x pn x is can be written as n pn minus 1 x plus n plus 1 pn plus 1 x equal to 0 uh, not equal to zero. Sorry, this is why. So these are all kind of recurrent solution one can do. Another recurrent solution one can. Uh, I'm giving it to you as a homework. Or probably let me do. Another uh, recurrent solution one can find uh, using the partial derivative with respect to x. So if you partial differentiate with respect to x, then also uh, partial differentiating. So if if you can partially differentiate the generating function z x comma t. W R T X. If you can differentiate with respect to X, what we we'll get? So I'll write del Z upon del X, and this would be equivalent to writing two uh, T. So I'm writing in uh, one go. Uh, so I think uh, you can self verify yourself. Okay, so you know that one upon root over one minus two X T plus T square. This is your generating function. And if you differentiate with respect to x, so you'll get 2t here and this is my, my this would be minus 1 upon 2 and this would be this bracket raised to power 3 by 2 and then you will again have minus of 2t. Okay, so you will have a minus of 2t again. So overall you will get this if I differentiate with respect to uh, partially differentiate with respect to x. So if I partially differentiate with respect to x, uh, I will get this. Is that clear? Sorry. So if I partially differentiate my generating function with respect to x, so I will get what? I will get minus 1 by 2, 1 minus 2 x t plus t square t power minus 3 by 2, and then the partial derivative with respect to x is inside, I will get something minus 2t. So overall, I can say that this would be my partial derivative. And if I write, I can write summation n equal to 0 to infinity. Now, since only pn dash is there, well, pn is there which is a function of x on the right hand side so this this will reflect here and t raised to power i hope it is clear so if you do so now you'll get t upon 1 minus of 2xt plus t square raised to power 3 by 2 is equivalent to writing summation n equal to 0 to infinity and this is p n dash x into t t power and then what i can do is i can take one of them there. So this is t divided by root over 1 minus 2xt plus t square. And then I can write equivalent to 1 minus of 2xt plus t square. And then I can write sums n equal to 0 to infinity. And then I will write pn dash x t raised to power. And then what I can do? I can uh, I can take them in and I can write again on the left hand side that this is equivalent to t times sums n equal to 0 to infinity. This is p n x t key power in here. And it is equivalent to writing uh, sums n equal to 0 to infinity. This is p n dash x. And then I can write t key power n minus 2 x t key power n plus 1 plus t key power of plus 2. Okay. And then um, again, the same thing, I can write it in this fashion, n equal to 0 to infinity. This is pn and see t power n plus 1 here and t power n plus 1 here. So I'll write simply 
this is equivalent to writing two uh, x p n dash. So this is two x p n dash x plus p n x. This is all into t k bar n plus one plus. No, sorry, minus p n dash x t k bar n, and then again minus. P n dash x t k power of n plus three forty zero. Again, the same problem as the we got we found in the very first problem. All of them are different powers. So let us uniform them up. So let us uh, write it all in the powers of t k power n plus one. So if I write all of them in t k power n plus one, I'll get two x p n dash x plus p n x minus uh, p n plus one dash x. Minus p n minus one dash x equal to zero. Okay, and uh, if it, uh, at the end I can write all these things in this right in this fashion: two x p n dash x plus p n x equals to p n plus one. Uh, sorry, p n plus one dash x plus p n minus so all these things can be uh, derived from the uh, different ways. Like one, two, two of them I derived it using the generating function, and two of them I derived it using the Rotrix formula. So I think this is something that is not going to be asked in examination as such. As I told already at very first, that approach would be very good. So let us take two questions which were asked in one was asked in gate exam, another was was asked in the net exam, and let us try to do them uh, more so in the fashion. Uh, like what one can do in exam. So, like what what one can do in exam, that is what I'm going to teach you today, and that will be important. I mean, uh, that would be good thing to see because in examination, however, you have to be slightly uh, sharp enough to see how to go about the questions because in examination you are not going to uh, you know have time. So uh, let us do that question that was asked in gate exam. That was as in gate exam, and this is given the recurrence relation, given the recurrence relation to n plus one. So this is, I think, I have derived just now to n plus one x p n x is equals to n plus one, and then I have p n plus one x, then have n into p n minus one x. Now, which of the following integrals? Which of the following integrals have a non-zero value? Which of the following integrals has a non-zero value? So, one of the integrals which I am writing below has a non-zero value. Which one of them would be? So, first, understand it is minus one to plus one. That is x square p n x p n plus one x d x. Option number B. It is given as integration from minus one to plus one, x into p n into p n plus two d x c minus one to plus one. This is x into p n square d x. And option number D. Minus one to plus one. This is x square p n into p n plus two x. So <clears throat> this is how it is. And uh, we need to find uh, which of the following uh, which of the following integrals has a non-zero value. So let us uh, let us first write what is p n minus x. So I have on the very first day stated that it is equals to minus one is to power n p n x. So I'm going to use first a trick. Uh, then I'm going to use odd and even things, and then uh, so if one remembers. Minus one to one f of x dx is equal to zero if f of x is an odd function. If f of x is an odd function, then uh, this integration is zero. <laughs> now, uh, if if n is even, then n plus one would be odd, and if n is odd. Then n plus one would be even. 
So in any case, this particular term Pn x into Pn plus one x. So if I replace, so if I replace instead of x, I replace minus x, what I'll get, I'll get Pn minus x into Pn plus one minus x. So if this is even, then this would be odd. And if this is odd, then this would be even. So if both of the, if I take both of the cases, uh, both of these cases, I can for sure write it as that this particular expression would be minus one Pnx into Pn plus one x. Because see, if n is even, this would be Pnx. So this would be Pnx if n is even. And this would be minus one Pn plus one x. And if there can be two cases, I'm writing it here. So if n is even, so this I can write Pn minus Pn plus 1. Because if n is even, n plus 1 would be odd. And if n is odd, so this is minus Pn. And this is even, so this I'll write Pn plus 1. In any case, I will write that this particular portion would be an odd function. And remember, x square is an even function. So x square, now again I'm doing Pnx into Pn plus 1x. Just replace x by minus x. So this will remain x square. And this will be minus Pn x into Pn plus 1x. So you can see that this function, x square Pn into Pn plus 1, this particular function is an odd function. This particular function is an odd function. And if this particular function is an odd function, then integration from minus 1 to 1, then integration from minus 1 to plus 1, x square Pnx into Pn plus 1 x dx would be 0. Since this particular function is an odd function. Since this particular function is an odd function, therefore this integration would be 0. Now, if you see the option number C, instantly you can see option number C, it is given minus 1 to plus 1 x into Pn plus square dx. So in any case, whether n is even or odd, this is obviously square. So this is odd. this this will always remain. So whether n is even or odd. This can be written as Pn square xc. Whether you write minus x or plus x, whatever, it will remain like this only. And this is odd. So overall, this would be an odd function. Overall, this would be an odd function. So this would be zero anyway. Now, what about option number B? Option number B says integration from minus 1 to plus 1, x into Pn into Pn plus 2 dx. So if n is even, then n plus 2 would be even. So I'll write Pn into Pn plus 2 would be again even function. And if n is odd, then obviously n plus 2, n plus 2 would also be odd. And if two odd functions are to be multiplied, let's say fx and gx are both odd functions, if they have to be multiplied, you replace x by minus x. This will be minus fx, replace x by minus x. This will be minus gx, so it will again be an even function. So in any case, Pn into Pn plus 2 will again be an even function. So this is an even function multiplied by an odd functions, overall this particular function would be an odd function. And since this is an odd function, this integration from minus 1 to plus 1, this would go to 0. So question asks, which of the following uh, integral will have a non-zero value? One can write, this would be the right answer, because this will have a zero value, this will have a zero value, and this will also have a zero. So one of them can be this. Now one can ask that, why did one give you uh, recurrence relation in the exam. So if I want to go with the recurrence relation, I'll go by that also. So alt alternative approach can be to do this. That uh, If I want to use my recurrence relation, my recurrence relation is 2n plus 1x, and I'll go option by option, is equals to n plus 1, and then this is pn plus 1x, and then plus n into pn minus 1. So, uh, so I'll write Pn plus, uh, sorry, Pnx is equal to n plus 1 upon 2n plus 1 x into Pnx plus, <laughs> I'll keep this x here only. I'll keep x here only. And n upon, and let's say I'll write this as alpha, I'll write this as beta. Okay, so that I'm, I'm not going to write it all over again. So x times Pnx can written as alpha Pn plus 1 and beta 
in medicine. And I'm dropping this function of x because I know that obviously this is a function of x. So I'm not going to write it time and again. Okay. Now let us uh, evaluate the option number one. So option number one said minus one to one x square pn into pn plus one. So you know that x into pn is equivalent to writing alpha pn plus one and b plus beta pn minus one. Okay. So this is equal to writing this. Okay. Now, uh, what I can do, I can use this right x into pn and again, again an x I can write and then I can write pn plus one, the x from minus one. And what I can write minus one to plus one x and then x pn I can write alpha pn plus one plus beta pn minus one and then pn plus one dx. And then again, what I can do, I can again write minus one to plus one and this alpha will remain as ever x into pn plus one. x into pn plus one would be x, uh, sorry, x into pn plus one would be writing alpha pn plus two plus beta pn. Not even pn, I think. Okay, so this is uh, if n was there, then n plus one. And okay, so this would be n. Okay, so alpha, this will come out as pn plus two plus uh, beta pn. Okay, so this is uh, if x goes inside, and then plus beta. And inside you have x pn minus one. So you have x pn minus one. I'll write x pn minus one would be equivalent to writing alpha pn plus beta pn minus two. So it is equivalent to writing alpha pn plus p beta pn minus two dx. And overall, if you see, this is equal to writing minus one to plus one, alpha square, and this all multiplied by pn plus one as well. This all multiplied by pn plus one. So this is alpha square, pn plus one into pn plus two dx, then plus alpha beta minus one to plus one, pn into pn plus one, then plus alpha beta integration from minus one to plus one, pn into pn plus one. Then again, Beta square minus one to plus one, pn plus one into pn minus two dx. So overall, this would be zero, this would be zero, this would be zero, and again, this would be zero. Why this would be zero? Because we know that integration from minus one to plus one, pmx, pnx, dx is equal to zero if m is not equal to n. So by orthonormality relation of the Legendre's polynomial, this is equal to zero. So this is what I have done. Because n plus one cannot be n plus two, n cannot be n plus one, n cannot be equal to n plus one, n plus one cannot be n minus two. So option number one has been rejected. Similarly, uh, for option number two, uh, what was option number two? Option number two was uh, just give me a minute. I think it is minus one to plus one uh, x into p n into p n plus two x. So you know that x into p n x into p n is simply minus one to plus one alpha. Uh, pn plus 1 plus beta pn minus 1 and this multiplied by pn plus 2 yes. and this is minus 1 to plus 1 alpha pn plus 1 pn plus 2 dx plus beta minus 1 to plus 1 pn minus 1 into pn plus 2 dx again this would be 0 by orthogonality relation of Legendre's polynomial. this would be 0 Okay, now option number C, option number C says minus one to plus one x into pn ka square dx. So again, this would be equivalent to writing minus one to plus one x pn and into pn. x pn will be alpha pn plus one plus beta pn minus one. And then again, x into pn, again a pn. So again a pn, so it will give you minus one to plus one alpha pn into pn plus one plus minus one to plus one beta pn into pn minus. So again, this would be zero because of the orthogonality relations of the 
legend is called. The last option, that is option number D. Let us find what would be right option. So the right option is obviously D because we've done it uh, previously using a different argument. X is square. And now you have P and X and you have P and plus two X. Okay. So now you'll get uh, minus one to plus one X I'm keeping constant X P and I'm going to write alpha P N plus one plus beta P N minus one. And then I will write P N plus two X. And then uh, again, I will write what uh, minus one to plus one alpha and X into P N plus one X into P N plus one would be alpha P N plus two plus beta P N plus beta X P N minus one. X P N minus one would be alpha P N plus beta P N minus two into P N plus two. So this entire thing into P N plus two. And you can see that only surviving term, this will not be surviving with this. This will not be surviving with this. This will not be surviving with this. Only surviving term would be P N plus two into P N plus two. So I know, so this integration would be minus one to plus one. This is alpha square and this is P N plus two plus square. And I know that integration from minus one to plus one, PNX, PMX, PX is equals to two upon two N plus one, uh, uh, Kronecker delta MN. So if M is equal to N, then this is two upon two N plus one. So this would be alpha square into two upon uh, two N. This is, so this will be two N plus uh, four plus one five. So this is two upon two N plus one, two N plus five. And what is alpha square? I think alpha square was the first coefficient. This is n plus one divided by two n plus one square. If you remember, this was alpha, the first one. So alpha was n plus one divided by two n plus one. So clearly this is non-zero term. So answer should be D. So correct option should be. Must be D. I hope it is clear. Okay, now if I go ahead and if I try to solve another question which was given in uh, net examinations, let us do that question as well. So that question was, so that question was, uh, yeah, let me write that question first. And uh, I think uh, most of the questions are done. Like, uh, like this is what is asked in examination. Okay, so one needs to keep a good care of uh, the previous year questions. Like, Whatever has been asked in previous year, mostly in that pattern only the question can be asked. Okay, so uh, one, one, one needs to have that kind of confidence. And this is net attempt June. So this is June attempt net 2013, 2011. And it says that let PNX. Now here they have concealed the information by saying that your PNX is not a uh, it, they're just, it's not a, it's not they're not saying that this is they're not saying that this is a Legend is polynomial, but they're just saying it is a polynomial with degree n and real coefficients. Okay. And in the interval, n belongs to 2 to 4, and they're asking integration 2 to 4, pnx, pmx, dx is equals to Kronecker delta m. So this is what they're saying. And they're ask, giving you option number A as P naught as one by root two and P one as root over three upon two minus three minus six. Option number B as P naught is equal to one upon root two and P one is equals to root three, three plus six. Option number C as P naught is equal to one upon two and P1 is equals to root 3 by 2, 3 minus 6. And option number D as P0 is equals to 1 upon root 2. And then you have P1 x is equals to root over 3 upon 2, 3 minus 6. Okay, so these are all P1 x. This is also a function of x. This is also all these. Okay, so I have dropped that thing because of the gravity. Uh, what I can do is, as I utilized one of the theorems in integral calculus, it says that minus one to one integration f of x dx would be zero if fx is odd. Okay. So question says that which of the following can be right? So 
it is instantly clear that if I use this kind of displacement, so if I use, if I replace x by t minus 3, so this will be minus 1, this will be plus 1. Or sorry, if I replace x by t plus 3, sorry. So if I replace x by t plus 3, so your 2 will come here. So t would become minus 1 and 4, so t would become 1. And this would be p n t plus 3. And this will be p m t plus 3. dt would be equals to chronic delta m. So because dx equal to dt. Now, if you if you see uh, this this particular thing, then one one can clearly see that if I want to find p naught, so one thing can be very sure that you write n equal to zero and you write m equal to zero. If you write n equal to zero and m equal to zero, this will be minus one to plus one. This will be p naught plus square dt, and this would be equal to one because n equal to n then quantity delta will be one. So your p naught should be equal to plus minus one upon root two. But uh, option given to you is plus one by root two. So don't worry about it because this is what has been supplied. So forget about this option. This can never be the case. Now all the three options can be possible. A, B, D are all possible. Now in order to justify them, what I will do, I will simply play a trick. I'll say, let us say N is equal to zero and let us take M equal to one. So if that is the case, this would be one upon root two minus one to plus one. And this would be P one T plus three DT is equal to zero. So if you remember it is minus one to one, and minus one to one f of x dx can be zero if f x is odd. So one of the one of the ways can be to see which of the function is odd. I'm not saying this is right approach, but in exam because you have to reject and select. So one thing can can be to see one thing that one can see is that if p one t plus three is an odd function, then this integral will obviously be zero. So let us find what is p one t plus three. So for option number a. I'm writing option number A. So option number A, if you replace instead of x, t plus 3. So instead of x, you replace t plus 3. This will be root over 3 by 2. Minus 3, minus t, and again minus 3. So this will be like root over 3 by 2, and this will be minus t, and this will be minus 6. So now this has changed the form itself. So I cannot write whether it is even or not. So this has changed the form. Obviously, this has changed the form of love as a something. Just understand. So let's say if, if option number A is the so this is p root 3 by 2 and this is negative, you take common out and this is t plus 6. So in order to identify whether this function is even or odd, you have to replace t by minus t. So if I replace t by minus t, I'll get minus t plus 3 here. And this particular function would then be equal to minus root over 3 by 2. And this is minus t plus 6. But it is not equivalent to writing. This is not equivalent to writing uh, p1 t plus 3 and minus here because p1 t plus 3 is minus root 3 by 2 t plus 6. If I write minus p1 t plus 3, it will be equivalent to writing root 3 by 2 t plus 6. But this is not equal to this because this is minus t plus 6 and p1 t plus 3 come negative will give you root over 3 by 2 t plus 6. So this is these both terms are not equal. These both terms are not equal. Again, let me explain you what I want to let's say. Let me again, again explain you. Let us say by uh, taking option number B, I'll be able to explain you. Let's say option number B. So option number B is root 3, 3 plus 6. This is your P1x. Now I'm saying I'm I, trying to identify that if I replace t by 3, t plus 3 instead of x, what would be the function? The function would be 6 plus t. Okay. Now I'm saying if function is odd, if this function is odd, then what will happen? P1 instead of t if I replace minus, so it will be equal to minus of p1 t plus 3. And what is minus p1 minus p1 t plus 3 minus p1 t plus 3 is minus root 3 6 plus t. This should be the answer. Now let us see. If I replace t by minus t, what I'm getting, I'm getting root over 3 6 minus t. And this is certainly not equal to minus root 3 6 plus t. So clearly p cannot be an option. p cannot be an option in the sense like if I can find one of the option which is odd here, then I'm very sure that that would be correct answer. I'm not saying ki, well, isko main karunga, then I'll be able to understand. Tum chaho to isko integrate bhi kar sakto. Like P1, T plus 3 is there. You take this particular function here and see what integral it is going to give. So in case of doubt, only then I will see. So let me check option number D. What will be option number D? P1 X is given as P1 X is given as root over 3 upon 2. 3 minus 6. And now I'm going to see what is P1 T plus 3. So what is P1 T plus 3? P1 T plus 3 is minus 
root over 3 by 2 and 3 minus 3 would give you 0 and this is simply t here. Because see, instead of t plus 3, if you instead of x, if you're at t plus 3, 3 would get cancelled. This is minus t. Now clearly, if you, re if you replace t by minus t, your p1 minus t plus 3 is equivalent to writing minus of this. This will be root over 3 by 2 t and which is equal to minus of p1 t plus 3. So clearly, this is an odd function. So this is an odd function. And I know if there is an odd function, if I want to integrate it from minus 1 to plus 1, this integration would certainly be equal to what? Same. So I hope the answer would be t for the same. I hope you've got the logic. OK, so option number d would be the correct answer. So uh, this is uh, enough for uh, recurrence relations and uh, legendary polynomial. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to do a few more uh, topics which have been left. And uh, then after, uh, this would be enough for uh, as a first exposure for legendary polynomial. I hope till then, you'll take care of yourself.